I read in a devotional this week by an esteemed theologian, someone I've, I've always read and thought a lot about and thought a lot of, someone who read the Bible and knows the Bible better than I ever will and, and you ever will. He said something, and it was, and it was, it was an audacious thing to say. He said, uh, he said the underlying governmental principle of God in the Bible is that you reap what you sow. And I thought, wait a second here. I know that verse at the end of that epistle, and it's uh, the whole underlying governmental principle of God is that you reap what you sow, and really kind of bothered me. And I, I'm not really. Uh, I'm not really up for that. I, I don't really agree with that. And, and 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 so I started to wrestle with that a lot. I've been wrestling with it all week. And um I I just wouldn't think that. Um the the underlying governmental principle of God in the whole Bible is that you reap what you sow. I would have guessed that it's love or it's, that it's forgiveness or this grace. Like that's good underlying principle, grace, you know. And that's what I would have argued is we don't reap what we sow. We're supposed to sow death and destruction and, and, and punishment, but we don't. We 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 get we have grace. Like we're not getting what we deserve. God's rich in mercy. Like and so how can that be the underlying principle? And and how can that be and, and not only that, but there I always felt that 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 this verse was very punitive. It was like God's not gonna be mocked. Whatever you reap, you're gonna sow. And I was always just kind of like, okay, okay, I know it's true, but don't hurt me. Like, and so I've always been just it's been one of those verses that it's kind of like you know it, but you just don't want to hear it again. God, don't make me hear it, you know. And um, and I'll read it to you here. It's in Galatians 6, starts at verse 7. It says, uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows of the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. And so the context of that is is being generous and doing good. And I've for a long time taught that, that that's sowing and reaping is about generosity. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you are, if you hoard and you're very stingy and greedy, when you're in need, you won't have anybody around to help you because you are a stingy and greedy person. But if you were a generous and open person and you were happy and you helped lots of people, I think when the time came, it would come back around to you. And we can kind of see how that principle works. and But we can even see the principle as a warning and as a a thing to scare us a little. I've often seen it that way. Hey, 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 you better watch out. You reap what you sow. Or there's karma. Or you pay for what you get. Or you get what you pay for. Like there's all sorts of ways to say this. And it's basically a principle in life. Like gravity or anything else. And God is a God that works that way. Don't think for a minute that God is not a God of order. He is. He took chaos. He took order out of chaos. Okay. Uh, in fact, I was listening to a commentary about this song called Reckless Love. And these people made a great point that God is not reckless. And uh, I don't like to nitpick about that stuff, but God is not, that's an attribute of God that's not true. Okay, God is not reckless. All right. He doesn't do things recklessly. Okay. And and God's a God of order. And there are laws and orders. and 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 I think that here, you know, it's just the principles being made. Now, it's being made in a negative light. Like, you know, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. So it seems really negative. But what if it's just a principle? I mean, gravity is negative, too, when you're standing on the, you know, the Eiffel Tower. Like, it could be a real negative. But is it negative? It's just a law. It's just a principle to guide, to help. Um, and the sooner that we realize these principles, the better off that we're going to be. All right, and so you reap what you sow, right? I'm like, God, how can that be the underlying governmental principle that you reap what you sow? And it seems so negative and, again, so punitive. It seems so wrong to me that I just couldn't get my head around it. And here's what I felt like God has dealt with me this week and said. 
he said something like, Bo, just look around, look in your yard. I'm ne noticing nature. It, it, uh, seeds planted there, there is where it grows. It's a persimmon seed, persimmon tree is the tree that grew. It grew in shade, it's growing towards light. This tree over here, it didn't make it, it's dead. It grew right here, but it, it didn't, it didn't do anything. It, it didn't, it didn't make it like, you know, and there was a decision. There was, there was, there was something there, and, but, but it, it's a natural progression of things, right? It's a natural progression of things. It doesn't have to be bad. It can be good. And all I could think about was reaping what I've sown and just taking that in the hardest way possible this week. And I'm like, my God, look at around. Look at, look at, look at what, look at the mess I'm in. Or, you know, and it could be anything, you know, you pick it. Look at the financial, look at the decisions we made. We bought that gum four-wheeler. We you bought that car and look at the financial mess I'm in. Or I've got $100,000 worth of student loans. Look at the mess I'm in. How am I ever going to get out of this? Or I'm divorced twice or three times now. Could I could look at the mess I'm in. I've got... I got this, you know, I made this one mistake, this one night stand, and look at what it's cost me. I mean, like, we, that's what we do. We just go to the things that we have and the bad stuff that we've reaped, and we just looked, and all it's done is brought condemnation on us, and all we thought is, man, sure enough, I've done reaped what I've sown. It is so bad. But I feel like God would said to me this week, it's not punitive. You have also reaped what you have sown. I mean, I have a beautiful wife that is good. and I didn't know what I was doing, but I was praying and trying to make a good decision back then. And I've reaped good from that decision. And my career, you know, I've, when I started, I, I wanted to do good. And I was praying about wanting the right thing and the good thing. And, and it's been not it's not all bad it's been good i mean the lines have fallen in pleasant places in many ways it's a mixture of bad and good but one thing i cannot say is that i didn't have a part in making it the life that i have is the light that i have made that i have created and the underlying governmental principle of god what he is wanting us to learn is that is true that there is freedom there is choice. There is responsibility. You have freedom and choice and responsibility. It is not just negative and punitive. It is also positive. You can reap whatever you sow. Imagine instead of it being this thing where it's a warning and this scary thing and you better not do wrong and just waiting on the other shoe to drop. That's the way that we think about this verse. But what if, but what if just imagine God and you're in this beautiful field and let's say it's a thousand acres and the topsoil is five feet deep, just rich, beautiful soil. And God just says, look, here's these seeds. And see, if you put one in the ground here, it's going to grow. It's going to grow into something. That, look. You can reap what you sow. Anything you want to sow, you can sow. Anything you want to sow, you can sow. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to cycle. And you're going to eventually reap that. And so what you're sowing today, you will reap tomorrow. And look at nature. Look at the evolutionary uh, Nature behind the things that God has made, and everything is this way. And we, but 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 in our Christian thing, like we have this weird thing, like we no, like we don't want to take responsibility, like we don't want to have to own our actions. We always want to put it off on God to handle it, or God to take care of it, or God's going to clean up a mess, or God's going to get me out of debt, or God's going to do this stuff. But we are reaping what we're sowing, right? And and God's going to be there with us, but we're still making our life that we want to make. And, and 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 this principle of grace and the principle of all this stuff is fine and we can practice that and we need to practice that and those are important Christian principles but we don't sit there at night with our kids and we're like, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter if you brush your teeth. It's not going to matter. We don't tell them that. We don't sit there and say, hey, look, it doesn't matter. You act good, you act bad, you break the rules, you do whatever you want to, it doesn't matter. 
No, that's not how I talk to my girls at all. I talk to my girls like this. Hey, y'all better quit fighting. You better quit your fighting. You better quit your arguing. If you don't quit, you're going to get in trouble. Hey, 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 girls, hey, girl. If y'all behave and do well, we'll go get popsicle. Hey, 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 wait. If, if you do good and you behave, you're going to get rewarded for it. But if you do bad, you're going to get punished for it. Like, that's what we're doing. That's what we do with our kids. That's what we do with everything. I mean, in our jobs, like, you know, nobody just go. nobody's boss is like, hey, you show up late, show up early, show up whenever you want, work however you want to. Don't worry about corporate structure. Don't worry about cor corporate guidelines. You just, you, just, you just do whatever you think is right. It'll work out for you. No, 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 no. You better hang in those guidelines and do all those things. If you do them well, you'll be rewarded for them and compensated for them. But if you do them poorly, you're going to get fired. You reap what you sow. So reap good and you'll sow good. Reap bad though, but it'll, it'll, you'll reap bad. Right? That's what we tell our kids. Hey, look, if you don't brush your teeth, they're going to like Shrek's. You don't want Shrek teeth? They're like, no, don't want Shrek teeth, Dad. Better brush them. You know, and getting on a love saying, it. man, I should write a book. God's not going to brush your teeth for you. God's not going to brush your teeth for you. They'll rot right out of your mouth. And so you reap what you sow, even with your teeth. <laughs> I'm just trying to convey that this is a lesson you have to learn. And the sooner that you can accept responsibility, the sooner that you can get on with sowing seeds that are good, that are beautiful, that are life-giving, that are life-enriching, you know, righteous people that seek good and seek righteousness of God, that seek to please God in their decisions, they plant beautiful seeds everywhere they go. And those seeds grow. And those investments, they grow. And those investments end up giving dividends. And righteous people, godly people, God that people that, that choose to follow God in a godly way, they try to follow I promise it, you look at them. People can be jealous if they want to. But you cannot deny that those people end up living in a garden. A beautiful garden that is blessed. All right, And those people that all they do is they sow seeds of hate and anger and violence and self-seeking. They find themselves alone. They find themselves rejected by society. They find themselves in holes that they can't get out of, that they've dug. And the principles of grace and the principles of God and the principles of love and all that stuff, we can layer that over that. That's fine, but it doesn't change the responsibility, the capacity of free will that we're given, the capacity, the freedom of choice. We have it, friends. We have it. And we don't have to see this as bad. What if today this is not a warning, but encouragement? Hey, 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 hey. You have the freedom. You can reap whatever you want. But you sow it. If you don't sow any seeds right now, if you sit, when the harvest time comes, there's nothing to reap. If you sit day in and day out and you don't do anything, you're not going to have anything. Um, 2019 was a pretty good year for me. I, I um, It's a special year for me. I, I think I've probably told you guys a story, but of course, in 2020, everything looks good. 2019 looks so great, you know. But in 2019, I made a, a, a New Year's resolution. I was going to write songs. After being a musician for 25 years in my life, I wanted to write my own songs, which I'd never done. I tried a couple of times, but it was very, very difficult. And so I wrote about 25 songs in 2019. 25 of them. Now, are they good? No. Is there maybe one or two? It's okay, maybe. I, I, there's, there's about... Five, six, seven, I like, that I actually really like, that I'll keep. And I'll play those songs for the rest of my life. Okay, so what is the difference between 2018 and 2017 and 2016, 2015, 14, 13, 12, 11? What is the difference between all those years and 2019? Nothing. Except I did sow seeds in that way. And now I am reaping um, that stuff. Right? Like I chose to actually plant seeds, specific types of seeds that I wanted to grow. And those things actually did grow and I harvested them and I had them. 
I have something to show for my time. My, and, 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 and it's very successful. Why? Because it was a desire. It was a passion of mine. It doesn't matter if I'd sell millions or not. I haven't sold any. I probably never will. It doesn't matter. I still have these seeds that I've sown, right? And I'm reaping this harvest because I wanted to do that. And I did that. My daughter is learning to play piano. She's learning every week. She's planting these little seeds. And she's going to water and fertilize those seeds. And to the degree that she does that, she can take it as far as she wants to go with it. Right? Right? It's investment. It's an opportunity. Right? And so God, I think, is saying to us, as you know, uh, Paul says in different ways, forgetting what is behind, pressing on. I press on towards the goal and the prize. And so the miracle today is that we have today. While it is today. The only time that we can plant any seeds is today. We can't plant seeds tomorrow because we're not promised tomorrow. We can't plant seeds yesterday because it's over with. The seeds planted yesterday are planted. Now you can go round them up. You can go get a little roundup, put it on it, and kill them quick if you know they're bad and they're going to grow into something. You, there's still some things you can do. I mean, analogies. But today we have today and we can plant new seeds. We can have new visions, dream new dreams, sing new songs. Find new hearts, new minds. We can find renewal in God. And he says that we can do all things through him, through Christ who gives us strength. It's not punitive. The underlying governmental principle of God is that you reap what you sow. It is an evolutionary thing. It is the nature of all things. And we should not shirk that responsibility. We should face that responsibility wide eye and head on. That is the difference between a child and an adult is an adult takes responsibility for their actions and for their thoughts and for their words and for their deeds. Take responsibility for who you are today. God wants you to be strong. He wants you to take responsibility, right? Parable, two sons. One says, God, I'll do whatever you want to, but he goes, Father, I'll do whatever you want to, but he goes away and he ends up forgetting about it, doesn't do it. The other one says, I ain't doing that. He thinks about it. And he decides to go ahead and do what his dad did. And Jesus says, well, which one did the will of the Father? The latter. The one who actually did it. Okay? Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving your own self. Your own self. Nobody needs to hear this more than me, friends. We all are a mixed bag. We've got seeds that we've sown that are good, seeds we've sown that are bad. And some of them have grown into big old trees. And we can't just cut down the trees. We have to live with them and we have to deal with them. And God has been there and God gives us the capacity and the ability and the grace and the mercy to get through it. But he is also the most beautiful thing that I think that he gives us is the opportunity every day. His mercies are new every day. You can start over again today. You don't have to keep sowing and reaping those kinds of things. You can learn from that. You can start to build a garden and it might not happen tomorrow, but if you start to sow good seeds and sow good and sow towards righteousness and, and faith and joy in the Holy Spirit, you will start to reap that. And the more that you sow it, the more that you will reap it. And one day in some distant future, you might look around and you've got a sprouting garden all around you, not with weeds and insects and, and work and toil and sweat, but, but joy and beauty, and simplicity, and goodness, and even purpose, you know, purpose beyond our wildest dreams. I want to close with a quote from St. John of the Cross. It says, ah, who has the power to heal me? Now, wholly surrender yourself. Do not send me any more messengers. They cannot tell me what I alone must hear. Do not send me any more messengers. They cannot tell me what I alone must hear. I'm a messenger. But you alone have to hear it. You alone have to learn it. Nobody can do it for you. I alone have to hear it. I alone have to learn it. I alone have to choose for my life, what I want to sow and what I want to reap. So be encouraged, friends. Don't be afraid. God is your best friend. 
God desires to help you. God wants to bless you and me. He promises so. He promises us, right? Some seed fell here. Some seed fell here. Some seed fell here. Some seed. Different things happened, right? But the parable of the sower comes down to be good soil. And Jesus says, if you don't understand this principle, you won't be able to understand any other principles, the principle of God. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. There's blessings and there's curses. There's life and there's death. There's joy and there's sorrow. There's, there's victory and there's defeat. And you have everything you need. And every day we get to make a choice. And he's like, this day, choose life. Choose life. So if you're living and breathing, if you're listening to me today, you have the opportunity to change today. Nobody can do it for you. You don't have to consult with anyone. You don't have to ask permission. All you have to do is ask God for help, for the grace to change. And you start to sow different seeds. You start uh, to follow a different narrative. You start to learn from your mistakes, take your experience and put it into practice for a better tomorrow. That goes for you personally. That goes for your marriage. You know, you can start, to, you can keep sowing seeds of discord and, and, and anger and, and unforgiveness and criticism. You're just going to get it right back. That's what's going to happen in your marriage. How do you get, I love Lehman's book. How do you become a new, uh, how do you get a new spouse by Friday? You become a new spouse today, baby. So it can happen. You can start to sow different things and reap different things in your marriage with your children. If all you do is scream and yell and you're in your house, is just an explosive household. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your spouse. Maybe you need to sit down and say, hey, hey, hey we have to change this because we're living in a household that's explosive and we're going to raise kids, all right, that are going to be nuts and it's going to be our fault. Or maybe we can look around and we can say, man, look at this society. Look at the towns that we're living in. Look at our government structures and that they're crumbling. And look at our church and it's failing. And look at all the stuff that's happening. Should we just stick our heads in the sand and go and buy a bunch of toilet paper and hibernate and hope that when we come out, it's all over with? That's what apathy does. And there's a bunch of things that I think are calling for us to get to that point in our lives. And we have got to fight tooth and nail against it, friends. You got to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. It's not over, baby. It ain't over. It ain't over. It is if you lie down and die. It is if you lie down and give up. But we're not supposed to give up. We're supposed to keep going. The end of this verse says, Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we'll reap if we don't lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. You know, when is the right time to do good? Always. When is it not necessary to do good? When is it not important to do the right thing? Never. If you keep doing good, if you keep sowing seeds of righteousness and faith, and love and all the things in the Bible, right? You're going to reap in due season, in the right season, when everything comes into place, you'll reap reward. God will not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. If you sow good, you'll sow, you'll reap good. If you sow bad, you'll reap bad. And so, man, my, uh, my, my thing is, man, where am I putting my investments? Where am I, what dog am I feeding? I gotta start opening this book again, friends. I've got to close my eyes and get in my chamber and ask God for help. The crazy, stupid thing that Adam and Eve did wrong in that garden so long ago is they decided that they did not need God and that they wanted to be their own God. And is that not what we're, our whole society is trying to do now? All moving to our own truth, all sliding around in our own fixed ideas, all doing what's right in our own eyes. No rules anymore. No authority. Where's the authority? We have an authority problem. 
We think we're the authority. We think that we know everything and nobody else knows anything. And if that's what you think, then you keep on going. You're going to reap what you sow. I got to quit. I keep going. I'm going to go too long here. My prayer is that we can see this, not as a warning, but as a potential, as, a, as an opportunity. God wants us to grow, right? By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, that you grow and that you bear much fruit. John 15, right? I'm the vine, you're the branches. You remain in me, I remain in you. You'll bear much fruit. That's growth. But apart from me, you'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. That's all I got, friends. I hope that you're all well. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart wherever you are. You keep going. You keep going. God is right there. God is right there. He's not going to leave you or forsake you. He's going to carry you home. He's going to carry you home. But he's not going to do it for you. He's not going to do it for me. He lets us have the lives that we want. He gives us the freedom to choose what we want. So choose life. That's all I got to say.